Good morning, this is Pastor Marvin Osborne the First Baptist Church of Birmingham, Ohio. Our passage today is found in Proverbs 28, verse 6. It says, Better is the poor that walketh in his uprightness than he that is perverse in his ways, though he be rich. So we see a comparison in this passage, don't we? Better is, better is, better is he that is poor, but has a walk with God. As a right, who lives a righteous life, who has his course set based on biblical standards. He says they are better off than the guy who has everything, than the guy who has the latest fashions, who drives the nicest cars, who, who live in the, in the biggest houses, and, uh, and, and is able to do all these vacations out there. Better is, is the poor than that guy who is perverse in his ways, who's perverse in his thinking, who's perverse in his heart, who's perverse in his actions. He's saying you're better off being poor and knowing Christ than being rich and um, and, and living in a perverse way, than not, not knowing God. He says there are worse things in life than being poor, and that's being rich and have a depraved mind. You know what? Money is not the answer to our problem. And many times money is the is the is the reason why we're dissatisfied in the first place. It, it that idea of covetousness. I want what you have, and I'll do what I need to get. Uh, I need to do what I need to do to get what you have, and I'll even take it from you. I'll hurt you. I'll I'll kill you in order to have what you have. Uh, many years ago, there was a uh, one of those shows on the Discovery Channel. I think it was. And it, how the lottery ruined my life. And it, it told the story of a man who lived in the Appalachia, a uh, very poor existence, but he, he knew God and he, he served God and he was involved in his church and the Sunday school and so forth. But all of a sudden he won an exorbitant amount of money in, uh, in the lottery. And that lo that money in the lottery in this poor Appalachian town was, was an amazing thing. And not only changed how he lived, uh, you know, what, what, how he, you know, it, his house that he lived in and the vehicles he drove, the clothes he wore, uh, and what he was able to extend to his family. But it also changed apparently his morals. And, um, you know, all of a sudden he started going to casinos and he started going to strip uh, pubs and he, he was robbed of hundreds of thousands of dollars that he kept in his car. I mean, this guy was foolish in his money and foolish in his time and foolish in allowing this money to change who he was and how he, how he lived life. All of a sudden the church and the word of God and the things of God didn't matter anymore. You see, uh, he was better off if he had never won that money and serving God, then having that money and now having to serve that money and having to live according to the standards of that money, that money opened up maybe was what was in his heart in the first place. And he had always desired to do it, but he couldn't do it. Now he had the money. He didn't need the church. He didn't need God anymore. And ultimately it, uh, it affected him affected him in a, and certainly in a uh, devious way. You know what? If we're not careful as believers, we can think that our, our biggest need in life is more money. If I only get that promotion, if I only get that raise, if I can only win the lottery, if I can only uh, pay off my bills, if I can only get in a better house or getting the better neighborhood or get a better this or better that. But in truth, maybe, and I think this is probably right. What we need is more of God rather than more of money. We need to understand that God is our provider. He is our protector. He is our sustainer. He meets every need that we have. He always has. And his promise is, is that he's never seen the righteous forsaken nor the, his seed begging for bread. He's not going to let his children beg for bread. He's going to meet your need. He's going to provide for you. He's going to protect you. That money is not the answer. The answer is God. It is a relationship, a deeper, more intimacy, intimate relationship with God. Let's not be like the world and run after the things that the world has. 
Let's run after God. Let's pursue God. Let's be like David, a man after God's own heart. And see if God doesn't meet every need that you have. I believe he will. Remember that God loves you. And I love you as well. And I'll talk to you soon.